Hello my friends, it's Ranger Russ from the Meg's Point Nature Center. Uh, I started a little early because I saw there was a small group of uh, tree swallows ahead of me and now they have seemed to all disappear. I think though, let's turn the camera around because there's a diamondback terrapin. Looks like ahead of me. You see that little thing floating in the water directly in front of my boat? I believe that's the head of a diamondback terrapin. And it just went under, so that was definitely a terrapin waiting there. All right, so there was a flock, I don't know, maybe a couple of thousand uh, strong. We should start to see uh, more swallows any time now. Got to keep an eye out because they come from almost every direction. So you'll see them coming up the river, down the river, across the river. Um, they'll gather around. What we're looking at right here is an island made up primarily of Phragmites. It's a pretty large island. There are boats on the other side also uh, waiting to see this. Okay, so all of that Phragmites makes an excellent place for these birds to roost overnight. They will land on the Phragmites. So many of them will land on a single stalk, the Phragmites will bend over. Uh, we probably won't see that because that tends to happen out more in the middle, uh, but we might um, see a little bit of it if they land enough, close enough to the edge uh, that we'll see them. All right. So it looks like we have a lot of people waiting to see the tree swallows. Now, this is a, a real phenomenon. This is something that occurs, uh, it occurs in other, oh, there's another Dimeback Terrapin ahead of me. Let's see how close we can get to it. Oh, I think it went under already. So the Dimeback Terrapins are just gonna stick their head out of the water. They'll float there with their head out of the water until you get about 15 feet from them and then they're gonna they're gonna go under pretty quick at that point all right emily one of the staff people at the nature center is out here somewhere she said she was behind me when i was turned around but oh there are swallows oh, let's see if you guys can see those um they are very small right now circling around up there Let's zoom in. Let's see. You guys will have to let me know if you can see them. This is just a really random looking flock. They're not flying together. They are spread out. Wow. All right. There's a lot, a lot there right now. Right on the horizon, right on the horizon there. Oh, I hope you guys can see it. It looks like a cloud of birds right now. So again, these are tree swallows. They've got about a 3,000 mile migration ahead of them. They're gonna gather here every evening and the flock really gets larger and larger as, the, as it gets closer for them to migrate. They'll come down from all across Connecticut. You know, more and more will come maybe all over New England. They'll gather here. Uh, generally, they all leave about the same time. There might be a few stragglers here or there after the main flock leaves. So what I'm seeing, they're, they're hovering right over my head. They're hovering all around me. If you guys saw my afternoon program, you know that I got uh, hooped on by a bird this morning, this afternoon. So I've got, I'm gonna have uh, probably like a times 500,000 chance of getting pooped when, pooped on when they're all out here. All right, let's see, do we have any questions so far? Not in focus, all right, I think I zoomed in too much. Let's zoom out a little bit. They're just gonna be little dots right now. It's gonna be really hard to see them. They are everywhere though, all over this island. So let's point you at them a little bit more. Some are flying low, hopefully you can see those. The tree swallow has a, a green iridescent back and a white chest. They do not have a typical swallow scissor tail that most people think of when you think of swallows. That's really only the barn swallow here in Connecticut. 
which is our second largest swallow. The purple martin is the largest uh, member of the swallow family that we have in Connecticut. Oh, we've got lots of people watching. We've got Vermont is watching. Very cool. So watching from Vermont, I'd like to know if your tree swallows have left yet. I would, ooh, look at that flock, look at that. They're not all flying together in unison yet. It's really kind of random. That's what I'm waiting for when they all start flying together. It's called a murmuration when they're all flying synchronized like a school of fish. All right. Let's see if we have any uh, any questions yet. I'm not seeing any questions. I would like to hear from you, wherever you're from, if you have any tree swallows around. At him and acid, we have them during the day, but they are not going to be around in the evenings. They come here for the evening. So this should be pretty exciting. Not quite sure where Emily is. She's behind me. And Josh and Janet are on their way out here as well. I had to get a little bit ahead just to get out here and make sure that I was here to film. Is this the main gathering spot in Connecticut? Absolutely. Uh, I actually don't know of any other gathering places here in Connecticut, except for this one. If anybody knows of a place where they settle down for the evening, let me know. All right, so we're looking at a few thousand birds right now. Um, a few thousand, geez, there's over 10,000 here. I'm not sure how well you can see them. It probably looks like a blur to you, but every now and then you'll see one fly by closely. Move back down. I think the tide is coming in right now, so it keeps carrying me upstream. Look to my right for a black boat. All right, there's lots of black boats out here. All right, they're still coming in. Now, the question that I have, and I do not know the answer, is why is it that they come in and they circle and they circle and they don't land until they're all here. It's like they wait for everybody to get here before they land uh, for the night. Right now, it looks like they're all heading downstream. Oh, there is a little squabble just happened in front of me. Oh, there's a big, look at that. Uh, there's a big com coming up on the horizon. Look at that right there. That's a big group. That's a murmuration. They're all flying together. Move closer to that group. Now this is one of those things, as I move closer to that one, another group is gonna come along uh, and that's gonna keep on happening back and forth, uh, depending on where I am. They may be behind me. Uh, it's just the nature of the birds can't predict mother nature although you can predict that they're going to be here so hopefully you guys could see that cloud of birds right there that was a lot of fun to see that one there's a lot of few stragglers around right now I'm seeing maybe 50 or so right now so not a whole lot Now this is a good time to talk about boating safety and our boating division I'm sure will appreciate this. 
if you're out doing an event like this, you need to make sure that you have a flashlight and a sound producing device. Okay, those are two very, aside from, or along with your, um, your PFD, your flotation device. Oh, there it goes, oh, they're going up again. Look at that. Listen, you can hear them. How cool is this? Keep your mouth shut when you look up. You do not want to get that in your mouth. Oh, this is awesome. It's so exciting. Like, there's a hundred thousand birds over my head right now. Look at that murmuration. Look at the formation that they, they all turn. They're, they're starting to do a little swirl there off in the distance. But if you look directly over my head, it feels like they're just randomly flying. Let's point you up. Look at that. It doesn't look like there's any rhyme or reason to it, but there really is. They all know what they're doing. They're heading off in that direction again. I have a feeling that they're going to be, uh, when it's time for them to put on their show, it's going to be at this end of this island. So we're going to move closer to this end of the island. I see a lot of so cools and wows, so I'm... Hoping that means you guys can see what's going on here. All right, so they are landing. Well, I don't know. They're swooping down like they're landing, but it doesn't look like they're actually landing. Then there's another swoop coming up. Now that looks like they were landed. Look at that, they're up again. So maybe they do land and take off and land and take off, and then they finally just settle down once for the night. I can't really tell, though. Maybe the boats that are further back would be able to tell. Oh, this is spectacular. All right, we're going down here. We're seeing a lot of movement of birds right now. There's, those birds are right on the water. Now remember, these birds drink on the wing, so they will fly down, just skim the water, get a little gulp of water, and then they go back up. Uh, and they can tolerate a little bit of salt, so if there's some salt in the water, that's okay too for them. They eat on the wing, they'll fly around catching insects, and they eat seeds. They will swoop down and hover on the... Uh, around the, the bushes, mostly bayberry. All right, looks like we have some litter floating here. Can't pass that without picking it up. That was gross. Okay, not sure what it was, but all right, let's turn. There's some boat birds right close here. Oh, aim it up. Listen, listen, listen. I'm keeping my mouth shut because I don't want him to poop in my mouth. Oh, boy. All right, I hope this is as much fun for you guys. I know it's more fun if you're in a boat. Oh, they're up again. They're, up, they're coming over my head. Oh, look at that. All right, there's hundreds of thousands now. This flock is getting larger. Oh, look at that. Look at that right over there. There's another murmuration going on. Okay, so back to boating safety. If you are out after dark, even if you're not going out after dark, you should still have a light and a sound producing device. I've got my supersonic whistle right here. I don't know if it's really supersonic, but it's a really amazing whistle. Um, I've got my headlamp, my PFD. I've got actually an extra layer of clothing. For any reason, I'm stuck out here longer than I intend. Um, all right, so there. There are some really high up over my head. Oh, there, there's, there's the up again. Listen to that. Look at that murmuration. They just did a fantastic dip right there. Dipping and swirling. I'm gonna back up so you can see these formations. 
a little wobbly because I can't use my gimbal out here, but you guys are moving with the waves. Hopefully nobody gets seasick. They're all over my head right now. Alright, so, so from back here we're going to get to see how large these groups really are. Let's do that. There are also a lot of boats out here watching right now. So this is quite an event. If you don't have a boat, uh, you can uh, get rides out here. There are a couple of groups that do um, swallow tours where they'll take you out on the boat and bring you back to shore. Um, right now, I can only remember one of the companies that does it, but RiverQuest does it, and there's another one out of Essex that does it. So just look up Connecticut River Swallow Tours, and uh, you'll be able to do this. Uh, John's asking location. So um, we launched, or I launched, at the uh, Pilgrim's Cove uh, boat launch. I think it's on Pilgrim Road right off of 156 it the parking lot is packed right now uh, so you really need to get here early if you want a parking spot right in the in the boat launch get your boat out get out here and then enjoy the show because it is a spectacle now they will be here for uh, a few days to a few weeks it really depends on the weather if the weather turns suddenly or we have a cold front that moves through uh, they'll take off and again most of them will leave together it's a 3,000 mile migration they're going to go to Florida and Central America uh, and they do fly pr pretty much together oh there they go up again there's a big group look at that there's a murmuration all right if you notice I use the word murmuration a lot it's because I think it's a really cool word uh, look at that Look at that. And Dave from ICRV will be really happy because he's the one that taught me that word. So he's going to be proud of that one. Look at that. Do we have any questions? It reminds me of the Alfred Hitchcock movie, The Birds. I'll have to tell you guys, we... Oh, look at that, right there. Nice murmuration right there. I think I see Josh and Janet on the other side of this murmuration. They are right there, so they're enjoying the view as well. Not sure if they're watching right now. Um, there was a time uh, when I was at Meg's Point that we had a, a flock of tree swallows circling the nature center. They were getting a drink in the pond behind, but it really felt like the movie the birds where they were just circling around um, it was really crazy and now I have uh, Mark Chansky who used to be with DEP he has moved on used to be in the boating division uh, he's floating alongside me right now hey Russ glad to see you're safe I got got my light I got my whistle I got everything I need perfect <laughs> Setting a good example for everybody. Are you doing boating safety tonight? No. <laughs> this is recreation. All right. We have, do they winter together at their destination? So they do spread out a bit. When they get to Florida and Central America, they're not going to stay in these massive flocks. Competition for food gets really tough if they do that. So they're going to spread out and... Um, that way there's not as much competition for food. And I'm glad I noticed some of you can hear them uh, singing, chirping. It's not really their pretty call, but they are making a lot of noise right now. There's a bit of a haze on the moon right now. Let's turn and let you look at the moon. I really don't want to miss their final swirl, though. It's going to be spectacular. There's the moon. Got a haze on it. Might actually be from the California fires. 
Oh, look, there's another murmuration going on right there. You can see that dark cloud, the birds in the distance. It, it really does. To me, it looks like a cloud on camera. I hope you guys can see it a little better than I can. Let's see if I missed any questions. How long will they stay before going south? So they're leaving really depends on the weather. So if it's like the weather's been pretty warm here the past few days, they'll stick around a little longer if it stays warmer. Uh, if it gets cold in a, quickly, then they're going to take off. Let's see if we have any others. Questions? Like a bird to tornado? It is exactly like a bird tornado. That's a great analogy because... They are swirling all over the place right now. So right now, they are very high and look like a very tiny cloud. Well, not a tiny cloud, but tiny dots making a very large cloud in the sky. And what time do we have? Let's do a time check. So 6.42, so sunset was 6.41 tonight. The sun is down behind us, and I'm not seeing any, yes, I am seeing. So coming up the river, there are still birds. There's still a, a flow of birds coming up the river, adding to this flock that we've got. They all seem to be hovering really hard, high, so I think we're getting ready uh, for their, their final swirl and landing. They are very high right now, so very small dots in the sky. How do they avoid hitting each other? That is the question. Uh, so I believe the, um, the main school of thought in that is that they are just, they see each other and they are aware of each other. Um, it looks like they're super close together to us, but my understanding is they're actually not that close together, so they can they have enough time to turn and move so they don't crash into each other. There's a big boat moving away. All right, the flock is swirling over this way right now. Many birds fail their mile mission. I think you're talking about migration, and some will definitely not make the migration. Uh, they do, these birds stop and eat on their migration. They are not a nonstop migrator. And if there's not enough food, occasionally a food source will be damaged or destroyed either by a natural phenomenon like a hurricane or uh, by people. If we mow an area where they normally go to get seed, even mowing a field uh, where they gather their insects. So you're going to reduce the number of insects in that field and not all of the birds will get their food. So not all of them will, will complete the migration. The older ones, uh, maybe some of the young, the sick and the weak. It is, it is, a, uh, it is a trial. It's a test of their strength and only the strong survive. Although in this case, it'll be, you know, thousands survive, tens of thousands. So there's a nice formation way in the back. I wish they were a little closer when they were closer. Uh, you guys could see them better, but right now I know you're probably just seeing little specks in the sky. If I zoom in too much, it probably won't focus either. How many birds? So I'm looking at a few hundred thousand. Hard to say right now because they're all they're very spread out, so it probably looks like more. 
waiting for them to start their formation flying. Oh, there's a little bit, a little bit of murmuration going on right now. I'm talking kind of loudly, and I think all the other boats around me are. Hopefully they don't mind. There's a lot of them right over my head right now, and there's a murmuration going on right about there. Are they strictly insectivores? No, they're not. So they are uh, omni uh, her omnivores. They will also eat seeds. So insects and seeds are their main food sources. And again, the tide's coming in, so I am gradually drifting upstream, and it seems like the birds are staying pretty even with the birds right now. Now, everybody that is uh, too young to remember the movie, you're all going to have to watch the movie The Birds. All right. Ah, there's a good question. Do Connecticut birds uh, migrate separately or join up with birds uh, from other locations? And I believe that they do... Uh, pick up other birds as they go. So. We'll have to check on that one, though, just to be sure. When, uh, where do they sleep during the summer? So they will sleep in smaller flocks, uh, but they will gather and perch. Well, I shouldn't say flocks. They use uh, the nesting boxes at Hammonasset and other places. So that is where they will uh, perch during the, the night, uh, during the summertime, is they're pretty solitary. This is really fun. Not seeing the murmurations that we were seeing earlier, though, so I'm going to actually move here as I keep on drifting. Alright, it's a nice view of the moon again for you guys. Alright, so tide's coming in, wind is blowing upstream, I just keep getting blown further upstream. thinking that you guys can see the little specks right now, hopefully. So we're going to drift here. We're going to probably be drifting upstream again, but that's okay. Wow, there's, all right, there's a lot more than there were when I first got out here. There's got to be 200,000 birds in the sky over my head. I always wonder why everybody isn't getting pooped on right now, but... I will have to say, most uh, birds go to the bathroom as they're taking off. Oh, there's a beginning of a murmuration there. You get these dark lines where they all start to fly together, and that's what we're waiting for right now. That's what everybody is out here waiting to see. This giant murmuration, the swirls. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's a bit far away, but they're starting a pattern over there. It's starting. It's still awful light in the sky, though. We actually have a pretty nice sunset right now behind me. As it gets darker, it's getting harder to see them. So I'm sure you guys are having a tough time seeing them right now. The 
Yes, they are little speckles right now, high in the sky. They've got to be a half a mile up right now. Not seeing any uh, formation currently. Why do they do this? That is the question. So um, I, I have a feeling that it's just because they're migrating together and this is where they gather before their migration. The reason that they migrate together, and let's turn that that way, the reason they migrate together is safety. There's safety in numbers. Um, if you're flying in a flock of 100,000 birds, the chance of you getting picked off by that peregrine falcon is not as great as if you are flying by yourself past a peregrine falcon. So, uh, there is some truth to the safety in numbers theory here. Right over my head. I hope my camera is, or my phone is really waterproof. All right, there is a good one right there. Oh, there they go. See that? They're they're landing right there. It's like a, they're dive bombing. Fast. They are landing so fast. There's a swirl above them. And look at them. They're, look how fast they're landing in those Phragmites. I hope you can see that blur of birds just piling down into the Phragmites, still going, pouring down. The flock is getting smaller. The amount in the, in the sky is almost gone. They are almost complete. And one, there's one little, little group swirling. One last group swirling. Look at them, they're still up there. They're still swirling. One little group. It's not a little group. There's probably 2,000 up there, but they haven't landed yet. Let's see where they're landing. They're still overhead. Ooh, that boat is smoky. A little burning oil there. And there they go. They're diving, diving right into the... Look at it. It's like a waterfall of... Or a bird fall. And now they're gone. All right. So there are no more swallows in the sky right now. I'm going to spin around and show you the sunset. I gotta get my headlamp on and head home. There are lots of boats cranking their engines up and getting out of here. Let's turn so you can see our sunset. I bet it's a beautiful sunset at Hammond Acid tonight. All right. There's a nice sunset. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. So it looks like we're gonna have a nice, nice weather tomorrow. All right, we're gonna turn, ready to head for home here. Do we have any questions? Couldn't see the landings. Well, that's too bad. They land very quickly. They're just driving straight down, full speed, into the Phragmites. It really was crazy uh, to see how fast they were landing. Well, I guess you guys really missed that. Uh, 
Where did we launch from? Pilgrim's Landing in Old Lyme. It's about a, about a mile up from 95 on 156. It'll be on the right if you're coming up from, from 95. Let's turn the camera around. All right. You guys see that sunset behind me? Uh, so, this was another program. I have over 200 programs on our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. Visit the Virtual Learning Center. You'll also see uh, educational materials along with the videos that we do. You can follow us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, and I'm asking everyone to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. As soon as I get 1,000 YouTube su subscribers, I'll be doing this on YouTube Live as well as Facebook Live. So please do that. Continue to follow these programs every Tuesday through Friday. There's some waves there at 11 o'clock. And we have a lot of comments going by here. I don't know if I can read them. I think it's a lot of thank yous. I don't see a lot of questions. So that's cool. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back pretty quick here. Right. I think we were up to about 37 or 40 people watching this live, which is pretty cool. So, until Tuesday at 11 o'clock, this is Ranger Us signing off from the mouth of the Connecticut River.